Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to make sure you know all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Don't miss out on all new episodes of Wade's World, Boob Windows and Long Boxes, our hard R movie reviews, and so much more, all completely uncensored. Access starts for as little as $1 a month, full videos when you pledge $3 a month. Check us out at the link in all of our show notes, or just go straight to patreon.com slash capesandlunatics. Hope to see you there. This is Luke of Parrot, and you're listening to the Capes and Lunatics Sidekicks podcast. I love Batman. Why? Ray loves the Batman. Who doesn't love the Batman? Anyway, welcome back to another episode of We Are the Night. The Batman podcast. I am Phil. Uh, I am Phil. I am Phil. Joining me as always. Uh, drop the F bomb while while Phil is like that. It is. Hey, y'all, it's and joining us once again for part two of Batman: The Long Halloween, our good friend Mr. Tyler Patrick. Hey guys, what's going on? A lot. A lot. <laughs> We're just out. When we're recording this, we're just hours away from the suicide squad. Well, it technically dropped well, yeah, two and a half hours ago. Yeah. My, well, uh, it already came out in Europe. But I mean, on for us Americans, oh, yeah, on think, yeah, theaters and HBO. Like seven or something, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I watched it. Yeah. My one friend was at work. He's like, ah, no customers are going to come in <laughs> and play. Hey, preseason football's on, and there's the Suicide Squad. People should be busy. It's true. All right, and uh, as like I said, Batman The Long Halloween Part 2 finally came out. Uh, surprised. It was like, what, like almost 90 minutes? Yeah. It was surprisingly long when you think about. For one of their animated movies? Yeah. yeah. Put yeah. the long in the long Halloween. <laughs> The, the the first thing I'm going to say right off the top about this that little flux at long is it it does feel like a part two in the sense it feels as if you were watching the long Halloween you press pause you went and did a bunch of stuff came back a month later and hit unpause because it doesn't feel like you're really introed into a movie. It feels like you just hit on pause and started where you left off. Because obviously yeah. on the Blu-ray, it's going to be one long story. <laughs> and, I, you know, I've wa- I watched it twice. How many times did you guys watch it? Twice. I just, wa- I just watched the, the, well, I just watched each part one time. But I think if I can and this weekend, I want to try to watch both like back to back. Uh, the other thing was I, I feel I, I, I know I liked it better the second time I watched it. Hmm. I can't tell you why, but maybe just because I knew what they were doing. And I, cause the second time when I watched it, I watched it with my book um, just for note taking and stuff. And I liked the story better the second time. And I look forward to watching it um, in a few months or whatever, when, they released the combined, and I buy it on Blu-ray. Still shorter than the uh, Schneider cut. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'll still it'll be like what three hours? <laughs> three hours of the long Halloween. I don't think it's even three hours. I mean, hour and a half. What was the other one? Uh, seven. seven. What was it like seventy some? Wasn't it? Yeah, I don't know. It'll still be over two and a half hours. Yeah, it'll still, uh, it'll be under three then. Uh, but no, I mean, I like that. I don't. I can't explain it to you why either, but I. Well, maybe. I mean, I did like this part better than part one, maybe because it's... It's a lot more happening, and a lot of things are coming together. Yeah, I mean, we, we trucked through this first couple of months, because, I mean, that whole thing with, you know, Catwoman freeing him from Poison Ivy, that was Valentine's Day, right, in the book? Okay, I have it in the book, because they switched it. Yeah, in the book, it was Valentine's Day, and the film that leans more towards St. Patrick's Day, I believe. I thought, uh, it was, I thought I thought it went to April. I thought, but because uh, or maybe yeah, it did because because the com- April's the Riddler and they they completely cut the Riddler out of this. Yeah, that was the biggest well, shocker. Yeah, because the Batman movie actually that's why they, they did have to retool some stuff mm-hmm. and get permission. I mean, he wasn't a big player, but we got some Penguin in this, and I mean Catwoman. 
Yeah, Penguin showed up for the final, well, like... you can't let... You can't her. not have Catwoman in there. My theory is they're doing the spinoff story where she goes and finds out, you know... When in Rome. When in Rome, yeah. 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 Which, That's uh, my theory. You know what? You know what? They need to do that. I was thinking. I was thinking that as I was watching this, especially towards the end. I was like, you know what? If they did that Catwoman spinoff, I would be totally here for that. My question was, do would they do a full film, or do you think they would do a short? They need to do full film. Full, full and the film. the sad part is they have to recast Catwoman. Yeah, that's the other thing they got to recast. So I kind of kind of wish they had done it already, or did it as a short with this. Because real quick, did any of you watch the Blue Beetle short? No. no, it sucked. I I couldn't even get through the first few minutes. Like it was wow. just, it was just the tonality, the cheesiness of what they were trying to do. I was like, nope, I'm done. I'm not doing this. Well, you know what? If I they got did... the the way to set it up for you know, <laughs> but no, if they did that Catwoman movie, you know, um, I think I just saw it today. I guess they recast Catwoman for the Harley Quinn series for season three. You know, you know who they got? Uh, uh-uh. Rosario Dawson. Of really? They did. <laughs> Why not? You don't like that well, choice? No, she does a lot of work, uh, voice work for DC animated stuff. So. I mean, she was Wonder Woman for their entire continuity, other than Justice League War. And wasn't she? Wasn't she uh, Barbara Gordon in Lego Batman? Yeah, and she was. Wasn't she Power? No, that was Gina Torres in uh, Crisis on Two Earths. No, but she has a good working relationship, so that doesn't surprise me at all. It doesn't, but. But yeah, um, they, you know, they, they, as predicted, they pretty much put a nail in the coffin that Albert Falcone was coming dead. He was dead. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. They didn't do that. They didn't pull that twist. Yeah. So that the two biggest things I'd say from the book that's in here is uh, no Albert's return. So anything that had to do with that and then the Riddler. Yeah. Nothing. As far as the second part, uh, so I mean, we got the Mad Hatter. I mean, we got Calendar Man, and they they, they do I what really like Calendar Man. That should have been the short. We should have had a Calendar Man short. I, I you know, the, they did a lot of the beats that are in the book, but they kind of shuffled them around yeah. a little bit. Of, have to with the adaptation. And again, what? they truck they truck through. You know, Valentine's Day, St. Patrick's Day. The, you know. Well, we started this movie technically, if you're looking at it as one movie, we started this movie at the mid part montage. Yeah. You know, if you're thinking about if you were watching this as a one continual film, this would be the time where you do a montage to speed up time to show. And I mean, did you notice that they did the calendar pages falling? Mm-hmm. Like I said, we've been wonderful in the other parts where we could tell when we jumped. Uh, to different holidays but i guess for pacing and stuff they like they picked and choose like which holidays they wanted to focus on the other ones they just went right through i'm just like okay see because let's no, be honest well, in the story some of them are kind of lackluster well the ones that they the ones that they spent through pretty much were if you think about um the the what the points were for those holidays they pretty much were like we'll just kind of go through this we'll hit the high point and keep going because I couldn't remember all the details the first time I watched of that particular holiday, but then going back and watching it kind of with the book, I was like, okay, I see, I see what they're doing. I see um, how they're uh, doing stuff. The, the April fools one's the one that I kind of, I always liked in the book, the fact that they basically shoot at the Redler with a plank yeah. for April fools. Um, so that was missing. And then uh, independence day, well, I was going to say, I'm trying to remember in the book, what did they do for um, St. Tyler Patrick's Day? Uh, you know, praised be to me. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I had a, they, it. Was, it was very similar because the biggest one that was changed was Independence Day. Because some, of, it, them, some of them, it's just goon getting gunned down, you know. Because yeah. Independence Day in the book was the coroner. And they didn't do anything with the coroner. Uh, they didn't do like... You know, they changed certain beats like Sophia and Sal's story is a little changed because they used the Independence Day starts. The first page is the corner getting shot by Holiday and tossed in the river. And in the story, of course, is when they have the hitman for Harvey and they use that as kind of a mm-hmm. way they really start to bring out 
his other side. Well, here's okay. Here's a question: Why was this rated? This part rated R. I mean, we got okay, like. Thank you. I was confused. We got, we got like two F. I think we got two F bombs. The, the yeah. one kind of got, you know. One got cut oh, off. It's not well, yeah, there. Yeah, she was like Sophia was like shooting, shooting everybody with that machine gun. So in. is it just because Falcone says it? Like you mother, blah, 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 blah. I, I don't know. And I'm like, did we give a? Did we want to do the F bomb? So we gave it the R, or did we get the R for some strange reason? And they say, okay. I, I felt now. like even though they didn't show it, so it felt like a little darker. The death of Falcone's sister, like that was different than in the book. But I liked how they did in the movie on his birthday with like the elevator opening and everything. Yeah. And sure. then how, how was it? Luigi <laughs> died for that hard. Uh, Luigi Maroni gets shot like right in the neck and you see probably, it like that's yeah. probably for violence. Um, yeah, probably the blood, yeah. So that means that the combined will be rated R. Oh yeah, definitely. But I'm like cuz I was like do we really need I mean, I don't mind language, but it's like do we really need the F bombs cuz I'm like in the comic. I thought it was a pretty adult enough story without like and they didn't have the well, language. We're DC, we're edge lords. We we're, we're try hards. Uh, I know. Um, I know the new DC. I know. We have to differentiate. This isn't sunshine and Marvel. Um. Well, again, I mean, I you know, I read this story as it came out new back in the day. Yes, I'm old. Uh, but I'm just, I'm just like you know, the story seemed pretty dark even without any of that. You know. Well, it's just all the you know, uh, film noir trappings. Just you know, and it's the, we're we're focusing on this like you know. Mob, yeah, but, mafia kind of thing. But it doesn't even seem creative. Her with the machine gun, you know, you mother effers. You know, she, again, she could have just been like, "Say hello to my little friend" or something. <laughs> I, I think, I think that they they can't use that. <laughs> I think Al Pacino will want his shekel. <laughs> you know, there's oh, they should have got him for Falcon. <laughs> so, I I like the second part. I feel like it gives more. It gives more to the creation of Two Face than yes. the book does. Yeah. With how they do Independence Day and then how they do Harvey in the courtroom. Yeah. But at the same time, I still felt like it was abrupt. Like the voice, like where the voice was coming from or whatever. Like I just took that as like the pressure is like really mounting and it's like how they do with the Hulk sometimes. It's like, you know, the acid really didn't create Two Face so much as like unleash him and like unlock him out, out of Harvey's head. Well, a lot wasn't the big bad Harv was how they used it on the animated series. Yeah. Like, and then some was one of the comics did it like Harvey, like he had anger issues and kept suppressing it. And eventually, it was like his other s anger side. Um, one thing that I noticed, like okay, dialogue wise, that was changed that I thought was interesting was. When they throw the acid on his face, in, in the movie, Sal is doing it like revenge for his father because he believes yeah. Dan is Holiday. Because he says, you're dead, Holiday. Mm -hmm. This stuff will eat through concrete. In the book, he says, you're dead, Dent. This stuff will eat through cement. And I thought it was interesting because in the book, he was doing it just to get at Dent for the Falcone family. Yeah, because it. Yeah, because in the book, I think you know the, Harvey was one of the holiday suspects, but it, it wasn't like oh, like in the movie where everyone was like, oh yeah, he's holiday, he's holiday. Yeah, but again, mafiosos don't need hardcore concrete evidence. Oh yeah, no, I, and again, like Tyler said in the book, it was just you know, hey, you're you're not gonna make me flip on the family. I'm just gonna take you out. I, I okay. So in the movie, I like how we pretty much have more of a definitive holiday killer. In the book, it's one of those Jeff Loeb endings where you're like, okay. It was Alberto. It was Gilda. It was Harvey. It was it, it was, was all three. You get to pick and choose. There were so many holidays. So in the context of this film, spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, should, should we say spoiler alert? <laughs> it is Gilda. For all of it, Ex doubt. Except, except, yeah, except Falcone. Yeah. And then I wondered, was it Harvey that killed Alberto? Because I feel like, yeah, but he, they, he wasn't he standing on deck with Alberto, and then Holiday killed him from above. So that had to be Gilda, right? But 
Uh, no, because remember, like the way they drew it, it's like pretty much looked like it was. It's the one time we really saw Holiday, and it looked like Dent. Well, I think that I think they purposely did that with the animation to make you think it was Harley. Um, but it, I feel like the fake nose. They do a good job of like why Gilda does it, like we talked about last time, really mm-hmm. creating that backstory. Yeah, I thought, I, I thought they did give her more like motivation in this than act, the actual like comic. And okay, here's here's the controversial at the end. You think Bat, you know Bat comic batman when he let her just walk away i mean i know she killed all criminals but i mean how many bodies did she drop right that's what i was like i put my notes like i know she was wronged and stuff but it, would he just let her walk away i mean even even if not prison wouldn't he take her to arkham or something but but he has to he has to like piece it together because like she's burning all the evidence harvey's already admitted to all of it he knows it's her what can he do? Just bring her in like she did it. Where's the proof? And then she's like, I didn't do anything. You're just you know, harassing me because I'm Dent's wife. You know, it's world's greatest detective. He could find something. But he's but he's not the world's visible. greatest detective yet. Mm. And this, because remember, in the first part, he talked about, I didn't realize I'd have to be this much of a detective. So it's really his first big detective story. Yeah. Um. So I, I don't know, because that's what I put in my notes. I was like, so she gets away with it. And Harvey oh, takes like the Spider-Man fall. it's Spider-Man and it's Christmas. It's okay. Everybody gets a mulligan. <laughs> I mean, I they I so think they're doing your idea, Lil, from doing that uh, Catwoman um, one. Because it seemed like we... Did we get more Catwoman in this than Batman? Which I didn't even mind, but... We got a good bit of Catwoman. And... I liked it because Catwoman was definitely played more as his partner in this. Yes. But I like the line where he says, I don't need a partner. Um, so like, I think oh, that. Just de- you wait, buddy. <laughs> oh, just so, wait. We're, oh, just wait. We're going to get the Dark Victory. <laughs> right. And that's what I, I'm hoping for. I'm hoping we get a oh. sequel that's Dark Victory from this. Um, oh, we, yeah. Poor Kristen. Kristen. <laughs> Kristen Char- she, the minute I said, Oh, I hear the long Halloween's coming out on as animated, she was like, Oh, does that mean we're getting Dark Victory? <laughs> we should. I mean, honestly, oh, yeah. we should. So, uh, it's prime. Yeah, this and- is the movie I want them to spend more stories out of. Actually, yeah. No offense to the other stuff right now. <laughs> but we did get our post-credit scene that I called. I did say it would come back and it would be tied in. We got our nice post-credit scene with the Flash from uh, Justice Society, which ties the Flash and Superman and Batman all together. And a new continuity. And Green Arrow was there. So that was cool. That means that there's a Green Arrow that we guys are going to get introduced to. They're like, throw the kid a bone. It's his 80th anniversary. <sighs> yeah. Throw but, Wonder Woman a bone. It's her 80th anniversary. Oh, oh, hey, we have Wonder Woman Day coming up in September. Well, yeah, I think. obviously. Nobody, Green Arrow just gets like, hey, let's make a Batman show. You can't do Batman. We got the rights. Let's do Green Arrow. Uh, Green Arrow. To the same thing, right? But so I liked that it was Gilda. I liked the cleaner reveal of a killer. Yeah, um, I liked that they really like explained it because you know I think they had to do that because people that had never read the Killing Joke were pissed about that Killing Joke movie how it ended. Like I know a lot of people who don't read comic books were super confused. I'm just yeah. Like, oh, I mean, I think because <laughs> I think. I, because I think too, and in the comics, it was a l- little more selfish motivation. Because didn't wasn't she doing killings just so she would have more time with Harvey? Yeah, and yeah. so they could start a family. Yeah, and then the share, book you could you could share a cell in Arkham. How about that? The book <laughs> ends with that wonderful line of, "I believe in Harvey Dent." And then she which, basically just like disappears, <laughs> leaves Gotham, and just disappears. Which was never in the movie, but I like her story. I kind of I wish I would have got her, more of her and Harvey's relationship. Because it's really weird how cold and distant she feels. And. But he could have been a two faced kind of guy, too. Carl. Right. And I would have liked to have. I would like to have seen that. <laughs> I would have liked to have seen that. Just more of their relationship dynamic. Um, or he could have just been her second choice. You know. She, he kind of was. I mean, she. Because she even says, like, I came to Gotham and found the only other person who had as much motive and drive. Uh, to take them down and well, to find justice 
and then she starts to say, I actually did love Harvey. Um, well, after so, everything with Alberta and the Falcons, it's like, yeah, I mean, did she have walls up? Like, she would have been cold and distant with everybody. And two, I mean, was she kind of just using him, too, to get back at the Falcons? That's kind of how I felt was she was using him, but then she gets a speech about how she actually did love Harvey. So, to me, it means that at some point she kind of flipped. So, but yeah, I think they they said they really wanted to do like that that cinematic trope at the end. It's like, you know, the woman wrong. So, you know, she took her revenge and, you know, yeah, I mean, she spells it out and it's, you're just like, yeah. And I was, I mean, we, we kind of, you know, had it in mind. What was going to happen? Backstory so heavily. It's kind of a red flag. Oh, like, I mean, how many times did she drop? She used to be a lawyer. She used to do this. And then when it's like, Oh, I didn't know Harvey went to Oxford. Why did it matter? You know, it's like, okay, she went to Oxford, blah, blah, you know, and we just piece it well, together. Yeah, of course, you might follow Alberta. Mm-hmm. So it just made sense that it was her, but nobody was looking at her. Yeah. Because she's a woman. <laughs> <laughs> but once again, I mean, I thought Jensen Ackles did a really good job as Batman. I like, you know, like that stuff, you know, right, you know, at the courthouse right before Harvey gets the acid, you know, Batman takes Gordon to the roof and he's like, He's like, yeah, I know. We got to talk in private. And Gordon's like, oh crap, private. He's like, not again. I didn't bring the lube. Sorry, Tyler. Oh, oh. If you're new here. Sorry, nobody told me. <laughs> I thought we were gonna be good tonight, love. Nobody told Rob. Uh, it's a bad old time. <laughs> I was gonna say, um, I totally forgot. What I was gonna say actually. No. <laughs> good job, love. Sorry. Alfred. I love. <laughs> I love Alfred in this. Alfred has the best line of the entire movie. As he tends to do. <laughs> I mean, you know, I didn't. I did miss the line in the book where Alfred says to Bruce about on Father's Day about maybe about him being a better father to Bruce. Mm. Um. But I did like. Mm. I did like what he said to Gordon Harvey about maybe you'll find justice like the justice that's been denied to Tama and Martha Wayne. Mm -hmm. And then now I'm paraphrasing. I think I wrote it down. Hold on. Because uh, we, we needed a floating, floating heads of guilt. Where, hold on. Did I but again, I mean, the whole city's deep in corruption. It's like, you know, the Falcons were going to do what they were going to do no matter what back then. So it's like. You know, you know, I think Albert's whole point was like, you know, at least, you know, Thomas Wayne got a hospital out of there where he could help how many, how many people. I mean, again, the Falcons were going to do what they were going to do no matter what. He says, when does the sins of the father doesn't fall to the sons for redemption? And if that doesn't sum up Batman, I do not know. <laughs> and then, of course, you know, he has the moment with Bruce where he says he's asked him about what they did. And he says. They'd be proud of their true legacy, which of course is Aww. Bruce himself. So, are we sure? Because I think maybe they think he belonged in Arkham. I, I'm just saying, are we sure? It's nice to say, but when you think about it, I mean, it, come on, look at Flashpoint. Look at Thomas Wayne Batman from Flashpoint. I mean, yeah, come on. I mean, come on. Yeah, that apple didn't fall far from the tree. <laughs> Seriously, I mean. And again, I mean, at the end, we got, you know, it was with Bruce at the mansion. So it's like, are we going to spend more stuff out of this? Or are we maybe going to get some of that Tom King stuff or, you know. And, and don't you just love how in the movie, like, I just, I need Jeffrey Dean Morgan to actually be Thomas Wayne in the animated since Jensen Ackles is. Yes. Like, I'm just throwing it out there. Oh, okay. So let's go a step farther. Let's okay. do some like court of owls and have Lincoln March and just get Jared Padalecki to come voice Lincoln March. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if they've, if they've kissed and made up about that whole fiasco, then yes, I'm down for it. Yeah, yes, yes. For those of you who may not be familiar watching this, yes, they these two are supernatural nerds. I just restarted uh, Nerd! season one, and I was watching like, man, this was so good. Uh, anyways, digression. Um, but, you know, I don't, I haven't read a lot of negative stuff just because I don't feel like dealing with it. But I know that some people are unhappy with this. Really? And I'm just like, you know what? I, I get. I think trolls are gonna troll, bro. Right. Like, exactly. Like, there's just people who are gonna 
hate no matter what DC does. I think this is a good step in the right direction. Yeah, I think part, I think Long Halloween Part One and Two is like some of the best stuff they've done in a while. I just wish this story they had put more money into it. To I like the animation style. I just wish we would have got better animation. If that makes sense, like that. Yeah, there's choppy parts for sure. There's choppy so parts, and there's that. It's that type of animation where they just have the front character animated moving while everything else is a still frame, or everything's just a little bit slower at moving. I know so there's less to animate. I noticed some of that. I don't know if I got used to it, but to me, it almost seemed like there was less of that. This as an archer fan, part I'm one. okay with it. <laughs> I mean, so, it was there, but to me, it seemed like it was less than part one. So you know, you go, you go, and you watch some of your like higher end animated films that were maybe theatrical, you know, two D stuff about how there's motion and movement even in the background, and uh, not a lot of like freezing and stuff phantasm for instance <laughs> yeah that's a great one to reference and again just like with live action i think like the scenes where it's darker kind of like helps hide some of the flaws that uh... i did there was uh, there was more grundy in this yes i was gonna used bring to... that up move your ass grundy um there but like i said there was more two-face and i liked it because i i actually two-face is my favorite batman villain um I think he has a great story and I like the character a lot. I realized that there is not yet a McFarlane two face figure. So I need yeah. that. And I don't know, is it just a coincidence or was uh, Josh Dumel doing a, uh, was he doing nine these animated series two face? Cause the voice I swear sounded kind of similar to me. It sounded Richard, very Richard Mole like, but yeah. I like Josh Dumel doing two face. I like the cast, period. <laughs> Harvey Dent didn't sound the same, but his Two-Face sounded very similar to Two-Face. And, and I like that differentiation. It's also like how some people can't do Bruce Wayne and Batman. Like, they're actually two different characters. So... <laughs> and the thing is, like, I we know that... Jensen, I think... Because okay, at first, I kind of, like... Was like, all right, how... Hearing Jensen Ackles' voice as Jensen Ackles is weird. Okay? Lilith knows what I mean. And there, I actually watched a video on YouTube called The Evolution of Dean Winchester's Voice. Because if you go back and watch season one, it's like, hey, man, I'm 26, bro. Mm -hmm. You put in, you watch season 15, it's, Sam, what are you doing? Like, he's already talking like he's got gravel in his mouth as Batman. Um, and that's why, like, Under the Red Hood is weird to listen to because you're like, I know that voice, but it sounds different. And then this is, you know, kind of the same thing. So, he did do a slight difference in his Batman voice to his Bruce voice. Um, but it wasn't him doing his Dean down Thank here goodness. voice. He's very you know? tired of doing the Dean voice. <laughs> right. And that's why I actually appreciated. But this, and I mean, it is interesting because like I, I haven't listened to it enough, but like, how did he vocalize any differences while being Batman talking to commissioner and Harvey compared to being, Bruce when he talks to Commissioner and Harvey other than just making jokes and things when he talks to him. So. I think there was a couple of actors difference, honestly. So. I, I like Scarecrow. <gasps> um, they gotta roll out that Scarecrow plan, eh? <laughs> I did not like Mad Hatter. Was he like an well, actor? Well, was this, well, I, but no, in this, was he supposed to be like an Irish guy or something? He it, was a, it, was, it was weird. It was it Looks was like very. I, I didn't look it, it up. was John DiMaggio. If oh, I remember right. That's that's interesting. Um, to me, he just sounded more. He looked like a mixture between the Mad Hatter of this book and what they did with him in the New Fifty Two, where they made him more like a deformed person. Well, I think was... kind of like in the in the Long Halloween comic. I mean, he was kind of like similar to this, right? Well, he was similar, but yeah. I, I, I mean, I just love Rudy McDowell from the animated series, that higher mm -hmm. register of the Mad Hatter. Oh, my God. We were just watching, yeah, the, his first the episode of the, on the animated series the other night. So, uh, but, uh, Link? Okay. What? Tweedle, Tweedle oh, yeah. Gigi. Tweedle 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 Tweedle. Tweedle. So, like, the, <laughs> the animated series is like, Tweedle D, Tweedle Do. Here they're like, Oi, the walrus and the carpenter were walking mate so it's a little 
a little different. But I was like, is he the Mad Hatter or the Leprechaun? <laughs> well, I mean, they really went for like the deformed like forms of some of those villains too, because it was the Tim Sale art that you know in the book, and you know, I mean. Joker's chin put Jay Leno to sh- I mean shame. It was like top like six. And he was wearing some Urkel pants because there were some hiked up pants too. Oh my god! Why do I? Oh my god! Stand there with a bloody crowbar. Did I do that? See, I mean that that's that classic. Oh yeah. Spread right there. Splash page, two page. Yeah, but yeah, I mean they really like went different with Catwoman. Yeah, she was more of a partner, like you said in this. You know, in the book, it was more like you know she was in it in this for herself. Cause, cause, oh yeah, cause, you know I love he the one character they cut out was this guy, the like clerk that you know kind Kevin of set Smith? in. <laughs> you shut your mouth, fellas. Um, but so yeah, I mean, I liked it. I like the ending. I... I I like I hate that certain things were cut out. Like um, little stuff that I liked in the book of like Father's Day where Jim goes home and James is asleep and has the tie and he takes the tie off that he's wearing and puts his new dad tie on. Like little beats like that where you see um, the characters like on Father's Day where two, like Harvey's in the basement and Gilda goes to talk to him and he's like agitated and talks about he went to see dad or whatever and you know, little little blips of the characters, because I, I mean, I love the scene in Halloween in the, the first part where you know Gordon's going to take the kids trick or treating, uh, and I like how we came back to Halloween with Alfred, you know, talking about having hope, and you know, gives out the candy to the kids that show up. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just got a message. Uh, yeah, Pittsburgh's ahead nine three. <laughs> And uh, that was the podcast. Phil will be leaving us now. <laughs> no, no, my son's more invested than I am. But oh, and uh, I, I'm just gonna go ahead and shout out uh, uh, Billy Burke for Commissioner Gordon. I mean, yes, yes. Love I, it. I mean, if you were to say you were gonna do a live action and just gave me this cast, but okay. I don't. I can't really think of anyone in the major cast that I would change if they were. If these were announced for a live action version. Okay, and, and shout out to David Danassian as you know for his little penguin stick, you know, polka dot man, <laughs> aka Abracadabra, aka the, that guy the from from Man, the, man. <laughs> the the crazy guy in the alley who was t- two faces, almost two faces, first victim in the Dark Knight. Oh, they, he also I uh, was awesome. in that Joker with the with the guns too. <laughs> he was also. He was also in Ant Man too, yeah, or Ant Man the first we, we film. We don't care about that. Here. <laughs> well, he was in both of them, yeah. He was like, <laughs> yes, the Russian. Uh, question. Here's one we forgot: the idea that the coin's origin came from Falcone. Love it, kind of. Didn't it come from Batman in the movie? Because in part yeah, one, didn't, did. didn't he hand Harvey the coin and be like, "Here"? Right, because a young Bruce found the coin. Mm-hmm. And. Carmine tells him to keep it and then Bruce gives it to Harvey which if we go back we talked about in the first see that's the one I want right there this yep. one came with this one came with one of Solomon's toys and wow. I kept it because I was like that's too cool for you to lose yeah this came I, I had this for a while I think it came with a uh, with the uh, DVD or Blu-ray of uh, the Dark Knight when it came first came out yeah the, the Blu-ray that everybody in the world owned yeah for some reason, and now yeah. everybody hates on it because it's cool to poop on things that millennials like. It's fine. I, I don't hate on it. I just think that the, it just, I feel like it goes, I could have done without the boat scene, honestly, but that's a whole other conversation. Um, <laughs> we'll talk about it on its anniversary, I'm sure, Phil. <laughs> but like we talked about before last time was it felt like Batman almost set Harvey up. You know, when he says heads, we burn it, mm. tails, we go home, and he flips the coin. Uh, which is what's the catalyst to kind of well, get he's Harvey. The catalyst for all of his villains. That's the thing. <laughs> but I mean, for any people who are hating on it, I'd say 
watch it a second why? time. And then if you can articulate why you don't like it, I mean, going in, you know it's going to have differences from the book. That's just the nature of adaptation. Uh, there are large jumps. There are illogical changes that happen in adaptations. And there's some that you can sit back and say, okay, I understand why you did this, what you did, uh, what the true heart of the story is. Well, any adaptation, they try to change a few things just so you, you know, you don't have like the complete blueprint if you've read the original, you know. I think sometimes that's a misstep. Like they really didn't need to add that stuff into, um, you know, the killing joke. I, well, like, yeah, yeah, no. I, I mean, think the only thing with the kill, I mean, I liked, I like the idea of adding some sort of Batgirl scene so that we can kind of yeah. connect with her character. Yeah, the sex scene before, was before, but was, then was completely yeah. wrong. Yeah, Tyler's yeah, right. It's all about Batman still, so it was kind and, of. And then, but what they did do in it, no, no. But I just, yeah, he's right. They, you know, yeah. He, in the beginning, you do something with, you know, you set up Barbara Gordon, show, you know, what a hero she is. And then, look really incompetent as far as I'm concerned, but that's just, maybe that's just me. But no, I mean, this is the first DC animated and the first Batman in a long time that I just remember being excited about that. I'm just like, oh yeah, that's awesome. This is Have the you first watched? Thing that's been well received in a while, yeah. Did you ever watch The Dark Knight Returns uh, as one film? I have both parts. I can't remember if I watched them back to back. But see, I have both parts. James has the as one movie. <clears throat> Mr. James Cole. Yeah, Mr. James the Muscles Cole. Who ironically moved at the same time that I like a week after I did, because you know, we just we're just cool like that. Um and it's the only other one that was like he's broken up. up. He's up on that high shelf. <laughs> <laughs> broke you know broken up into two parts you know they they did the death and return of superman but technically those were two independent films different directors different writers uh stories that connected to each other that they put as one movie which i have and i've watched that one um but again too i mean that makes dark sense. night that, is one makes, story broken up yeah, i have never watched that as one film yeah, I mean, the death and return of Superman, that makes sense to break that up into two parts. Because in the comics, it doesn't that... make sense for two people to be, two different people to be in charge of it. Yeah, and the, I mean, even as one movie, you'll feel a slight tonal difference in like direction and stuff when it gets to the, the second story. But I, I'd kind of like to watch The Dark Knight uh, Returns as one movie. It's, you know, I have it, I, I've watched it. That I've been on record as saying that Dark Knight Returns is not my favorite Batman story. It's not. I don't love it and worship at the altar of the Frank Miller Batman of the oh, Dark Knight Frank, Returns no Batman. Frank Miller's gotten his comeuppance. Oh, uh, <laughs> the <laughs> the the era of Frank Miller is gone. There for a while, you know, that was the thing. Well, let's do it like Frank Miller, adapt Frank Miller stuff, and now we're finally at like. Now we're we're, we're past that. I mean, beyond like you know the Dark Knight Returns and like Daredevil: Born Again, it's like I don't know the quality. It's just, it's just he hit an apex, and then all of a sudden he just started going downhill. All Star Batman and Robin, I'm looking at you. But at least this movie didn't do that. I think it's a solid B plus for me. B plus. Yeah, it can never be an A, just because. <laughs> I don't like I, when they change unnecessarily change things for adaptations just for adaptation's sake. The changes yeah. that they made made sense, but I mean they actually don't have to do it because they don't have to. They I feel to. I feel like okay, let's let's go back real quick to Hush. They tried to make Hush a little simpler and cleaner at the end, and I feel like it failed. They tried to like trick us, like, oh look, it's not Tommy Elliott like you think, which I think takes out a whole layer to that story. This, I feel like they did right. I know it's not the same writer. Okay, I, I know that. But we're looking at it's a Jeff Loeb. And sometimes on Jeff Loeb's endings of his big you mysteries, to, actually. <laughs> they're a little convoluted. You know, yeah. because, yes, Tommy Elliott was hush as far as the man in the bandages and all that. But the Riddler was kind of the puppet master behind the whole thing. They tried to make that cleaner, and it didn't really work. In the book, The Long Halloween... Gilda is a killer. 
-hmm. and her motives are you know are put there this they gave her a real backstory and made her straight up the killer other than the killer of falcone because if you look at the time when it should have been falcone's death she had two which was montoya and i'm not sure who the other detective was at her house the whole time because she even says like i can't get my car out and they said we'll drive you wherever so right there told us that she's not going anywhere so harvey you know was finished it up for her so i i like in this one they had they cleaned it up and the changes in this all make sense now if you had more time like if they ever wanted to do this live action i think a like mini series type thing would be the way to go do 12 you know what i'm saying do a live action live how long halloween and it's 12 up 12 episodes 13 episodes you know uh or even if you do a live action it doesn't even have to be long halloween let's get some hey hbo max let's get a batman series with batman and maybe do some we can never have a batman series again do some do some detect do some detective stories. I mean, look how popular. I think we can have a Bruce Wayne show, but we can't have a Batman show. We let's see. We have let's look at this. We have a Batwoman show where they've tried to talk about Batman. We have Titans where it dances around Batman as much which, as it can. We have he, Gotham. Yeah. Right, we Phil. Have Bruce Wayne and two seconds of Batman. And, and we had have I guess still have Pennyworth. You know, it's like <laughs> that's why I always go back to the Teen Titans Go. Next week, utility belt. Yeah, utility belt coming through. Well, Alfred, the like movie. Said, like I said, look how like popular like uh, procedurals are. Like you know, Law and Order SVU is on like what season twenty one, twenty two. Well, it's like again, do a do a mystery, do a procedural thing, and then you drop Batman into it. You're telling me people aren't going to watch that? HBO supposedly, Max? that's what the Batman's supposed to be, and we're supposed to get that Matt Reeves. It's supposed Gotham Seven series. No, yeah, but it's not Batman. Yeah. Isn't it supposed to be the GCPD? Exactly. Oh, yes. oh, that they'll, show? they'll dance around Batman, but they won't yeah, give us do an actual... Do, we'll do act- the actual GCPD book! Like and we were supposed to! Do, do a Batman procedural on HBO Max, and if it's on HBO Max, you can go as adult as you want. No, because then you'll still get in trouble. Like, Batman damned. You'll still get in trouble. Oh. Uh, but I mean, I think that's what I mean. That's what we really want is a really good Batman procedural show. I mean, you give us all these other shows that play in that universe that dance around it. I mean, you How want much you for want, the rights? That, that, just, just give me a number. Give me a number. <laughs> and then, like we said, and then if they can't do Batman, they just do Green Arrow, and because they're like, oh, he's close well, enough. We do. Hey, we do need a better representation for Green Arrow. I still need my Green Arrow Supermax story to be to happen. So I mean, that's what they tried to bastardize in. Was it season f- six, seven, seven of Arrow? Was it seven? Mm-hmm. Were they were they put we him in jail? And they... about that season. All all I know is that if you take the two live action Oliver Queens we've had, you put them together. You really kind of start to get the real character. Uh, what I want is I need a rebooted Green Arrow series set in Seattle with Sherwood Florist. Okay. Oh, yes, he, wants some, he wants some grill. He wants some grill. Uh, I'm just gonna have to change it up, throw everybody something different, and I would I would like a you know series story. That keeps to the comics, you know, like we've had two live action Green Arrows and neither of them have ended up with the person they're supposed to be with. Give us a true Eddie Fires. <laughs> Give us a two, true Eddie Fires. So, but I guess that's why there's the multiverse. And in this multiverse part, this Green Arrow did this, but whatever. I have a whole uh, thing I'm going to put online just to make people angry about Lana Lang later. Oh my. <laughs> just to Don't argue my point. But it's true. It's See, not an. It's not just the argument. It's a true statement that Lana Lang on Smallville. It doesn't matter. But Lana Lang on Smallville is not really Lana Lang. Lee, hey, 
Do you know why? Wait, do you know why? Do you know why? Because his mom was on a leg? Because in season two, they flat out say that she was the daughter of Henry Smalls. But Mr. Lang adopted her. So she's actually Lana Smalls. But because of adoption, she became Lana Lang in this multiverse continuity. So So the real Lana Lang was never born on that earth. Yeah. <laughs> well, wait, wait. Lana's dad was Biggie Smalls. What? We don't joke about the small. Though. But no, but no. Leave, leave your, leave your controversial takes for those uh, curmudgeons down in Australia. Sounds like a plan, Jan. But the long Halloween. Yes. Again, some of the best, some of the best Batman animation we've had in a while. I okay. love that man. When in Rome. When in- I mean, I would love to see a win in Rome. I mean, they they actually do reveal the name. I mean, uh, Louisa. I mean, of with, Catwoman's mom. I mean, with the movie coming at the beginning of March, are we going to see start seeing more Catwoman stuff? Probably not. I, I definitely been kind of off with DC lately. Unless, I feel, unless they wait to see what the movie does, and if Catwoman like really starts well, trending, it, maybe. It's Zoe Kravitz. I mean, it might just it can't be worse than Halle Berry. No offense. <laughs> Lilith, if you put on a Catwoman mask right now, you would still be better than Halle Berry. If you put on Mickey, Halle, but I hate that movie. <laughs> if you put on if you put on Mickey Mouse ears and told me you were a Catwoman, you would still be better than Halle Berry. I was gonna say, hell, if Charlie Esser puts on a Catwoman mask, we be better than Halle Berry right now. We're doing me now. They 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 took the template for the movie The Crow and was like, cat, and yes. it was like, I have this script called The Cat. What the Catwoman? Awesome, let's do it. get it together <laughs> and they are trying desperately as we see with this movie i definitely top, think it was an uptick in quality from the last couple so they're trying top three worth dc movies i mean if you look at some of this yeah. stuff, i mean the animated stuff the comics i think you know they'll never admit it anymore but i think they're seeing yeah let's kind of steer us back towards like the pre-new 52 stuff and back when we were making break um yeah just Oh, hey, uh, don't take us too far off topic, but Tyler, did you read uh, Superman, Son of Kal-El, number one? Yes, I did. I'm sure you and did. I was, I was all game to, to talk about it, but like I told Phyllis, I've been so busy with the movie. Like, I totally forgot that was last like, oh, Friday, Friday was Friday. Like I was, The whole day, Like I even asked Jania and her dad who was helping with stuff, I was operating thinking it was Thursday. So, Because I, I even referenced her about to podcasting with Phil tomorrow and stuff earlier in the day. And then he sends me the message. I'm like, oh my God, it is Friday. Um, I really liked Son of Kal El, but I really don't like that they retconned his birth. Oh, what? You out of convergence? You don't like that? I like the convergence because one, um, it gave us a really clean reason why how Superman could conceive a child with Lois. He's powerless, yeah. And it's the same thing they kind of did on Superman Lois. They did the he's powerless, they have a child. On Argo, yeah. You know. It's born and everything. And then in Superman Lois, they kind of retconned how the twins were born. Um, so I didn't like that because I, I like the convergence. I know it's a little mucky about the whole convergence, but then at the same time, like that's almost like they're trying to say convergence never happened, which is a whole crap on continuity, but whatever. They, um, they should have just said Lois was sitting under like some kind of red, red sun lamp every day for a couple hours just to, you know, keep that beat as powerless still. You know, and then. Number two is I like the idea that Superman's child was delivered by Thomas Wayne. Mm. And like that, even, you know, it's that flashpoint Thomas Wayne. Yeah. But you have this kind of synergy between like Bruce and uh, Clark and the fact that, you know, Bruce is meeting his father and it's kind of a mirror of what he himself could be. And then his father delivers Superman's son into the world, going back to being a doctor um, that was really cool. But then I feel like it also destroys the story that I really loved was the super, the Lois and Clark Dan Jurgen stories uh, leading up to when that Superman entered the you know continuity. So again, again we're quiet. Also trying to, I feel like they're definitely trying to streamline stuff too. And, so and which may, I give. mean, which and makes sense, I, you know, keeping away all the new 52 stuff. Uh, which makes sense. I mean, it's it's comics. Things happen, but 
other than that, I, I enjoyed the book. It's one of those stories that I can't wait till I, I have like a thicker like trade of it, you know? So you feel like you're just, cause you're, you're like, it's like you're building into it. You're like, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll wait. All right. Let's keep going. So, all right. I like what Tom Taylor has been doing on Nightwing too. Yes. Um, yeah. I've always liked his writing period. Oh yeah. So having him writing this and Nightwing at the same time is exciting. Diggity dink. That has right. no unknown origin. Phrase of unknown origin. I oh I know. <laughs> I know. Mark Wade couldn't even remember that. Ugh. Uh uh well I was gonna wrap this up. Will if you gave a B plus for the movie. Tyler, did you give your grade? Uh no, I was I was going to, but we yeah, we, we do what we do always do, tangent. Um <laughs> I, I kinda lean towards I, I kinda with Lilith on her thinking, I put a B minus for, the, uh, for this film by itself, but I kind of lead to a B. That's because, like I said, it starts rough. If you were just to watch this movie and you put it in, Ayo. it starts bad to be uh, uh, on its own. But if I'm looking at this as a whole series, I give it an A minus as of right now. Mm. Oh, okay. But I'd like to watch them again back to back. Uh, but I'm sitting at an A minus for them as a whole. Uh, but like I said, the, watching the Long Halloween Part Two again by itself, I I liked it much better. But yep. if I have to look at it as a movie on its own, like if I just put this one up and put it in with watching it with someone, maybe it just starts like I said in the middle of a montage. Um, you just kind of start and you you're like, well, I mean, think about that opening scene is Bruce in Ivy's mind. And pay and the pacing, it's just like, yeah, man, they streak through like a, like two months and stuff. So yeah, yeah. it's about months, twenty yeah. minutes in or something when we actually start to find that ground where we feel like the movie is going. So that that first twenty minutes is kind of rocky if you're looking at it as just an individual movie. So, but it, but again, they did good with Catwoman because even when Catwoman shows up to to free him from Poison Ivy, I'm like, I knew it was coming because it's in the book, but I'm just like, yes. Oh, they did great with Catwoman just because oh, yeah. they made her straight up Bruce. Like you said, Bruce's ally, Bruce's friend. Um, it's definitely a proto idea of like a Robin. It sets up the win in Rome. It sets up a, more stories of them being as a couple than where we've seen it a long time. Again, I don't, that's what I said. I think we're going to get a lot of branding of those two as like more allies because that movie's coming. Phil, what's your letter grade? Ah, um, I think I got to agree with well, B plus for the movie overall. Uh, I might stick with my B plus. I mean, very good. Again, any problems I have are just like little nitpicks. And again, I'm just I'm very impressed. Again, like I said, it's been a long time since I've been in- impressed with anything uh, DC animated, especially like a Batman thing. But so yes, definitely on the right track with this. They need to keep this up. Now, if we could just get a Nightwing movie. You heard a kid. I mean, come on. That's all we say. We need more Nightwing everything. I mean, was it Tom Taylor arguing that Nightwing should be Nightwing should be considered one of the big heroes of DC and not always kind of second caliber? Yeah, he says Nightwing's already a a legacy character i think that that's the problem they still view him as like a legacy character and so they're always going to treat him as such until they put out merch and realize that it sells out <laughs> and they're like hey yeah you know you gotta kind of put your money where your mouth is i mean come on i'm like he's batman but he's not as dark and you, you know you can do the snappy patter the jokes you know well you know you can much more I mean, versatile literally, he could be the spider-man if they really snap mm-hmm. put their head out of their butt mm-hmm and again, I mean, you could drop him anywhere you. I mean, if Batman, you're you're firmly entrenched in Gotham. You know, Nightwing, you could do Bloodhaven. You could do. Do you well, want him in? I guess Phil, you could this come in Thursday, one week from today, right? Yeah, Titans season three drops. Yes, yeah. the first three episodes drop, and then it's weekly, I think, or something. Oh, is it the first three? I think. I think. Don't quote me on that. I think. <sighs> But I can't keep up with everything. So, you mean Gotham Knights? <laughs> hey, my kids asked me about that game today. Solomon's like, "When's Gotham Knights coming out, Daddy?" I'm like, "I don't know, buddy. They they change everything." Daddy, I want to play. He does. He goes. He goes. 
Daddy will be Nightwing, Mommy will play as Robin, Sailor will be Batgirl, and I'll be Red Hood. I'm like, okay, buddy. Get after my own heart. <laughs> All right, so. All right, before we get out of here, next time we'll be talking Batman Shadow of the Bat number 36, right? I lost, I lost my place. Oh, shop Will. Uh, yeah, Batman Shadow of the Bat 36 with Black Canary. You're welcome, Will. I know. I said thank you, Patty. And then, and then uh, you're welcome, Russell. Yes, uh, like we said, October is going to be... Uh, Wait, no, is that September? Hey, are we going to review the together? We should do the in October that forty-page long Halloween special that they're putting out. The oh, yeah, well, yeah, we'll do that somewhere, definitely. Yeah, yeah, but I'm, I'm just saying, like, we should do that together since we were doing this and we all did the book together the first time. I mean, I'll tack it to the end of one of our episodes. I don't care. Yeah, we're do we'll do that somewhere. If definitely. it's a forty-page book, it might be it might have to be its own episode. That's that's a, <laughs> that's a pretty hefty book, but I mean it's a Jeff Loeb book though. He sometimes he doesn't put a lot of dialogue in there, so. But that Tim Sale yeah, work. They fight for eight pages. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you, Je thank you, Mister Chichester, for that. Uh, <laughs> Wasn't it uh, Jeff Loeb himself who said something about like you could read one of his stories while on the toilet? I think. Don't quote me on that one, but I feel like it's something that he said. Probably, but DG Chichester was telling us, yeah, get, you know, it's a it's a crime that like get, guys get paid the same whether they like do dialogue every page or the or if they even do, you know, eight pages. They just fight. Uh, Those uh, guys, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, they're just grunting, guys. Uh, uh, yeah, they're just fighting. Well, I'm talk, talking about toilet reading. <laughs> Hey, it was uh, George Newbern who told me that, you know, he was told about how, you know, there's that thin line where making fight sounds that either sounds like you're having adult time or you're on the toilet. But there's, he's like, there's this fine line in between that sounds like you're fighting. He had to, he's like, you had to kind of work to get there. Wow. But yeah, I was going to say, uh, so yes, next time, Batman Shadow of the Bad 36, and then follow it up with a bunch of uh, Scarecrow stuff. You're welcome, Russell. Uh, Scarecrow? Like as in Gotham's Haunted Nights? Oh, no. As in Batman Annual 19, Batman 523 and 524, Batman Legends of the Dark Knight 137 and 141, and Detective Comics 571. That's your September, kids. Yay. All right, so send us your thoughts. What did you think of the long Halloween? Uh, or any any of the upcoming stuff, email us, capesandlunatics at gmail.com or call the voicemail, 614-382-2737. That's 614-38CAPES. And remember, follow We Are The Night on Facebook, Twitter. Find links to all of the various social medias for all the shows. Find the link to this YouTube channel. Find links to the Patreon. More stuff coming there. Links to merch. All in one place. Stay hydrated. Stay link, hydrated. link tree. L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash Cape Sand Lunatics. And please, please, please remember, support all things Southgate Media Group. Go to southgatemediagroup.com. Go check out the Southgate Media Group uh, YouTube channel. Go subscribe there. And also subscribe to the uh, Southgate Media Group Patreon. There's a bunch of free content. There's a bunch of paid content, all from every show in the Southgate Media Group. And of course, you can always pick up Pod Life the book now in digital and paperback. Uh, and you can pick oh, wait, that up. Wait, I'm volume two. I know. So am I. I want to see what Tyler Patrick wrote. I know. Uh, but yes, you can pick up volume one right now on Amazon. And when you do, you gotta read. Use the link for Southgate Media Group right down there in the show notes. Thank you, Lil. Help us support this show, the network, and that man stuffed with straw himself, Rob Master Doom Southgate. Make it rain, so says Master Doom. Your weak sauce. <laughs> Go back and look at my history. I get so much right. Mark my words. All right. Mr. Tyler Patrick, where can people find the Krypton Report? Well, on anything Southgate Media Group related, 
Also, right here next to my name has our Twitter handle. And if you just look up Krypton Report or Krypton Report Pod, you'll find us anywhere podcasts are available. All right, little Hellfire, you get to be the Charlie Esser tonight. Bring it home. <laughs> well, if you guys want to hang out with me on the interwebs, you can find me on Twitter at Lil Hellfire, on Instagram at Lil Hellfire69, and of course on TikTok, just making comments, not content. Don't get excited at Lil Hellfire69. <laughs> Bye, Felicia. That's pretty. Funny. I'm 12. When you need me to be 12. <laughs> Duh. Uh. Oh. All right, kids. Thank you for joining us. I don't know. It's an animated movie. Think Ray will listen to this one, bro. Oh. No. He should. I know he should. He should listen to every episode of that. Well, I'm about to. Revenge will not let him. I'm about to record an animated episode with Ray. Hey, we're about to record an episode with Ray Saturday night. We had to reschedule it, what originally was, but we're. Ray's guest starring on Ray's doing a crossover with someone? Get out of town! We're, uh. Maybe bring Priscilla Rose back to talk about Ray's guest starring on Ray's doing a crossover. Yes, that is a true case of like 85% of podcasts on Earth have had Ray. We are uh, going to be reviewing All Star Superman. The Ooh, movie. Oh. Stay tuned, kids. Connor got him. <laughs> Stay tuned, kids. We're doing a crossover. We're going to be talking to him uh, about the Great Hulk. Yeah. So, yeah, we just, James and I did the book, and they did the book last year or a while back. So, we're going to do a crossover and talk about the animated film. All right, kids. Come back next time. Same bad time. Same bad time. We are the night. We are vengeance. That doesn't fit on.